right, guys and gals, we have 11 games on tonight's NHL slate. We got to get right to it. Let's break down the DFS side of this thing with three of my favorite hockey heads. They love sticky puck just as much as you and I. Uh, Rotowire's Paul Bruno and AJ Scholes. We got Pete Jensen here of NHL.com's Fantasy on Ice podcast. Uh, who are you paying up for tonight at center, Paul? It looks like I know Matthews, 9,200 bucks, day to day, missed the last game. We know that, but he did join the team on the road trip. I think he's going to show up tonight. I think I think it's too much of a price to pay, though. Given the matchup, I'm going to fade him this evening. I'm going to say, look at three other guys who have much more favorable matchups, including Alex Barkov. He's carrying the Florida offense, which is on fire right now. He's got $8,300 price tag against the Detroit team. That's minus Dylan Larkin. So I don't know who they're going to put up against him at center ice that can slow this guy down. He's got 19 points in his last 10 games played, averaging 18.3 DKs along the way. Sebastian Ajo is doing the same thing in Carolina. He costs a little cheaper, $7,500 for a guy who's got 11 points and 26 shots on goal. He's uh, he's also a, a regular scorer, and he's he's facing a Winnipeg Jets team that that has just gotten eliminated. They will be a dispirited club, I think, Cal Carolina rolls them. And then St. Louis, one of the hottest teams in the league, paced they're uh, pacing their attack behind Rob Thomas. He's $5,700, the cheapest of the big boys that I'm looking at. 19 points, to averaging 15 plus DKs in the last 10 games. He gets a San Jose team that's in the bottom third of the league in goals against. So that adds up to a big night for him. All right, AJ, are you looking for a center as more of a standalone player tonight or one to kind of, you know, pair or stack with a winger? Yeah, I'm looking the stack option here, and and I am going to use uh, Barkov here. I mean, if you look at the DK Sportsbook, the Panthers are ridiculous favorites favorites to win tonight against Detroit, and I think they have to be the starting point of building out any lineup here. So for that reason, I'll pay the 8300 to get Alexander Barkov in in my lineup. His goals per game rate this season is 0 .59. And that's despite a recent five-game drought, which he, you know, dispatched in fantastic fas fashion with a hat trick on Tuesday. If you want to fade the Panthers, because they probably will be heavily owned, uh, I would give Tage Thompson of the Sabres a look at 6,800 since they'll be facing the Devils in a winnable game. But for me, I'm not going to be fading the Panthers tonight. I think it could be a big blowout win for them. So that would be what, AJ? Would that be their 12th one in a row? Uh, well, it would be 12 in a row for – it's got to be more than 12. It would be 12 in a row just for Bobrovsky. Okay. Um, I think Spencer Knight picked up two in there as well. So Damn. Okay. They're on an 11-game streak now, guys. Just, okay. So, you know. All right. No, it's 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 good to know. Uh, Pete, it would also be good to know who you're going to pay up for tonight at center. Yeah, totally echo what these guys are saying about Florida. They don't lose anymore right now these days. But Crazy. I'm looking at Elias Lindholm. This Calgary Flames offense is ridiculous. They're playing Dallas, who got beat pretty bad yesterday. They'll be on the second of a back-to-back. -back. So Elias Lindholm, uh, still pretty moderately priced among the elite at $6,900. And, yeah, with what he's doing this season, he's almost at the 40-goal, 40, 40 assist mark. He's got 39 of each. He's top 15 in the NHL in even strength goals and points. And his line mate, Johnny Hockey, is definitely worth spending up for as well if you want to go the stacking route because Johnny Gaudreau, not sure many people realize this, but he has by far and away the most even strength points in the entire NHL this year. I don't think he's getting enough MVP love, Johnny Hockey, but perennial underrated Elias Lindholm, I'd spend up for him. Hey, Paul, I'll go right back to you here for a uh, winger as in like which one needs to be in your lineup, because I'm assuming if you don't like Matthew's price, you're going to go with Marner there at eighty four hundred bucks, five hundred dollars clear of the next guy. No, I'm going to fade him. I don't like the matchup. It's going to be a, a tight affair with Tampa, uh, with Florida tonight. I think whoever they get one of the Florida teams is going to be tough <laughs> anyway tonight and and, two, and Thursday. Saturday right rather than that game. Huberto is my pick in that, in that game, though. $7,900 for a guy who's got 18 points and, and 33 shots on goal in his last 10. Nobody's stopping him or slowing him down. Yeah, he uh, looks to be a good good play against that Detroit club. Patrick Kane is a point-scoring machine. Let's not forget about the non-playoff teams completely. He's got 90 points in 73 games on the year, and it's all about reaching the 100-point plateau for him. So I think he's going to continue the high shot rate. He's got 45 in the last 10 games played. And uh, that's against the Los Angeles club that's in the, in the hunt. So it could be an interesting game there. Vladimir Tarasenko of St. Louis has been a tank. That's almost that's his nickname, the Russian tank, actually, in St. Louis. 
20 points in his last 10 games played, 32 shots on goal. He gets a great matchup against San Jose. And then finally, that Calgary top line, you can't overlook them when a guy like Matthew Tuchuk is priced at only $6,800, 16 points and 30 shots on goal, uh, averaging 17 plus points in DK play over the last 10. A tough matchup against Dallas will only fire this guy up. So I'm not scared about that one. All right, Pete. I mean, you, you typically maybe want a guy who's going to take a bunch of shots on goal here at winger at a reduced price. I mean, Hoover does not exactly a reduced price, but 111 points and he gets a lot of assists, especially, especially secondary ones, dude. Yeah, I'm finding a way to tap into Elias Pettersson, the center that has 39 points in his past 29 games. And the way to do that is Brock Besser, his line mate, just came back from injury a couple of days ago, has five points and seven shots in his past two games. And again, Brock Besser has had an underwhelming season at large, but the Vancouver Canucks are in the midst of a playoff push. They're really still in this thing, and they're playing the Minnesota Wild, who has great goaltending. But uh, take that shutout away that Talbot had uh, in the most recent game, and they had allowed 10 goals in their prior two games uh, prior to that. So they're not perfect. Minnesota's already clinched. So I think that it's going to be a situation where Vancouver needs it more. Pedersen will keep going as the hot hand and Besser, again, has been exploding ever since coming back from injury. So I really like him. And he's pretty cheap, 4500 for a yeah. player that I would normally expect would be like 55, 600, 6000 type thing. Okay. Uh, AJ, I'm looking at like cool Caulfield too around that same neck of the woods, 4-7. What do you want? Oh, man, that's super tempting. Uh, I'll always use the the Wisconsin Badger whenever I can, but I, I think you have to go up to the top here and use Barkov. As you said, Emerson, 111 points this year that trails only Connor McDavid. For some reason, he's $500 cheaper than Mitch Marner. I'm not really sure why when you consider uh, he's got the best matchup on the slate tonight. And, and, you know, like I said, he's got more points than Marner on the year. Uh, I would honestly recommend looking full stack across this entire line. Now, Carter Verhege is going to sit out tonight with what they're calling a, a maintenance day. Uh, so the third man on that line is going to be Sam Reinhardt, who comes in at a pretty modest 5,500. So you can relatively easily get all three of Barkov, Huberdeau, uh, and Reinhardt without having to go too uh, too heavy into the, the price range. Okay, uh, Pete. Let's go back on the blue line. Who's your favorite defenseman tonight? I like the matchup for Rasmus Dahlin, Buffalo Sabres. Uh, a lot of people out there may not know that he's reached the 50-point mark on the season, something a Sabres defenseman hasn't done since the mid-'90s. So uh, high praise there. I know they haven't had the best teams in recent years during their, you know, their playoff drought, but still some good players have played for that franchise since the mid to late nineties. So I give Darlene a lot of credit, favorable matchup against the New Jersey devils and talk about what Darlene did uh, four points in two games, the back-to-back -back set over the weekend against the Philadelphia flyers. Uh, he's been great against the Metro division this year, 19 points in 21 games. So I'd like having him in my lineup because even though Buffalo's out of contention, they have Alex Tuck, they have Tage Thompson, who's at like 36 goals, and Jeff Skinner. Those guys pop off on the power play. Buffalo has one of the best power plays in the month of April. All right, let's go, Paul. Hook me up. I, I love the call on Rasmus Dahlin. I'm right there with you, Pete. Uh, all that you said is true. The Sabres are really building something. I think they're playing with a ton of confidence, and uh, he's been driving a lot of that offense as a power play quarterback, so well worth the $5,400. I'm going to look at a couple of guys that don't get credit enough for what they do on the defensive side of the puck, too. Uh, you don't normally think about that with Justin Falk in St. Louis, but he's blocked 10 shots as well as getting 11 points in his last uh, 10 games played, so that's worth over 13 DK points per game and well worth the $5,300 per dollars if he reaches that average tonight jared spurgeon playing against vancouver driving the minnesota offense which is on fire he's got eight points and 21 shots on goal 20 blocks for a dk average of 12.3 points per game in his last 10 aj who's your dude on the blue line well for me i'm gonna go with justin falk here 5300 is the price tag so a little bit discounted compared to the top of the board but for the month of april he's actually got the second most points among blue liners here, the matchup is solid going up against San Jose, who's got a ton of guys sidelined due to injury right now. Uh, so I think it's a good opportunity to use the blues tonight, starting with Justin Falk. All right, guys, let's get you out of here with this. Best value play this evening. 
Who are you looking at, AJ? Well, I got to throw some penguin in here, right? So for yep. me, I'm looking at Ricard Raquel, 4,600. He's getting that plum assignment to play with Crosby and Gensel on the Penguins' top line, including replacing the still suspended Evgeny Malkin on the number one power play. Look, it's a risky play for sure, considering he hasn't scored in eight straight games, but he has five helpers over that stretch. And I think at under 5K, that's good value for this guy who's, again, going to play on a top line that uh, really generates a, a ton of offense for the Penguins. Paul, who do you want? I'm going to give you three names to think about. Whoever plays Montreal has to be a consideration. So Kevin Hayes been playing very well of late, eight points, 37 shots on goal, $4,800 the price tag on him. He's got a size advantage against some of the little guys that he'll be opposing at center ice. Braden Shen for St. Louis has a great matchup against San Jose. We've already panned that club in this episode, 12 points in his last 10 games played. So, and then I got to throw some love to the Maple Leafs. I'm not going to ignore them. They're playing Tampa tonight in a game where they can clinch second place. And uh, bunting for the Leafs has been on fire on the road. The guy's a road warrior, 42 points and 38 road games on the year. Priced at only $4,200, despite the fact he has three goals and 12 points, along with 12, 28 shots on goal. He's uh, got a great matchup because he's got those line mates. Uh, I think Matthews is going to play tonight. Pete, bring us home. I like Philip Deneau. Not many people are talking about what a great signing this was for the LA Kings. Everybody was hating on it in the offseason. Now the Kings might make the playoffs, even if they are backing in. They got a favorable schedule down the stretch. That continues against the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, three goals, one assist in two games for Deneau against the Hawks this season. And very quietly, Philip Deneau has already reached a career high in goals with 25. So you know, hate him now. I, I think I think it was a great underrated signing that has helped the L.A. Kings progress beyond their years. And he's doing this as the number two center behind Kopitar. So I give him a lot of credit for the season he's having.